In the past video, we talked about how to track the ball in 20 milliseconds. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to predict a ping pong ball's trajectory in 100 milliseconds. There are some important physics concepts that you need to know. Time, position, velocity, acceleration, three-dimensional space, meaning XYZ coordinate system, factors, and the fact that they have a magnitude and a direction, projectile trajectories, the Magnus effect, that is just how objects can curve in the air based on their rotation, and collisions. So we have the side view and a top view of a ping pong table. The first thing that we want to do is measure point, and this will be taken from the camera as we know from the past videos and we're going to label this position, this measured position, by P0. This will be our first data point. The next thing that we do is we make sure that both of the positions are at the same exact time, which will be T0, for the side view and the top view. The red lines signify the ball's trajectory over time. The differences of the positions and times make the velocity vector v0, as you can see in the diagram below. The differences of the velocities make the acceleration vector a0. If each data point took 20 milliseconds to acquire, it would take 100 milliseconds to acquire 5 data points. The important thing to note is the fact that you will have 4 velocities and three accelerations. So now what our program does is we look at the ideal trajectory with no spin and compare it to the measured trajectory with side spin. Only around the five points that we know will we be able to compare the ideal trajectory versus the measured trajectory. Since the ideal trajectory with no side spin is straight, and the measured trajectory with side spin is curved, you can then take the difference of the lines to go figure out how much rotational velocity you have, and then if you know your rotational velocity, you can then figure out how much the ball is going to curve in the future. The Kalman filter is used by many to predict the next state of a given system the prior knowledge state, in our case, would be the position and time of the ball. In the prediction step, we are able to use a physical model that allows us to model how the ball traverses through the air and how the ball bounces on the ping pong table. As the ball is moving through the air, measurements are constantly being taken. With the predicted data and the measurements, you are then able to compare the prediction to the measurements. The thing that is unique about the Kalman filter is the fact that it's recursive and you can go to the next state to get a better prediction of where the ball is going to be in the future. Let's look at how the Kalman filter deals with different sample sizes. In this picture, the probability of the ball is represented by the red circle around where the ball is and the sample size n is 5, so the probability of the ball being in that area is highly probable in this case. But as the sample size decreases, the probability of the ball being in more places starts to increase as well. So once we get down to the point where we no longer have acceleration, the ball can technically bounce anywhere. Now. With locally weighted regressions, you are able to take your data and break it into small little segments. And when you break it into segments, you are then able to get a higher resolution fit to whatever curve that you are currently trying to trace. And in our case, it would be the trajectory of the ping pong ball over time. Using the bounding conditions method, you first have to set up the position thresholds. Next, the velocity thresholds, and after that, the acceleration thresholds, and finally, the rotational velocity thresholds. 
Once all the thresholds are set, you can then predict the trajectory of the ball within a hundred milliseconds. The reason why we chose this method is because it's the most computationally efficient method. Now, now that we've finished explaining how to predict where the ball is going to be in a hundred milliseconds, in our next video, we will talk about how the system is able to react in 10 milliseconds. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the control system and how all that works.